so this has been quite an achievement. I have to say that watching this in full, I've, see, I've had the pleasure. My name is Ava Chin, by the way. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, and um, uh, I was a friend of Corky's, and I'm the author of the forthcoming uh, family memoir called Mott Street, about four generations of my family in New York's Chinatown. Um, it is a pleasure to be here. Jennifer, I have seen uh, the shorter cuts of this um, when you had shown it, when Corky was still alive, and he had the pleasure of getting to see it. Um, I have to say that watching it again on the big screen, it's very difficult right now to talk because the work is so moving. And thank you for doing that work um, for so many years. No, truly, truly. OK, so I do have questions. Um, and so I think the first question, oh, although should we also introduce everybody one by one? We need to do that before we launch into the discussion. So um, shall we start uh, just down there? Thank you. I'm Linda Hattendorf. I'm the editor. Um, I'm sorry. I'm a mess. I am Lily Fan. Linda does this to me every time I've watched this. This happens, and it's just been going on for too long. I'm Lily Fan. I'm the executive producer. Thank you, Lily. I'm George Hirose, along with my wife, Hillary. Uh, we are executive, executive producers. Thank you, George. Jennifer. Hi, I'm Jennifer Takaki. I'm the director producer. And I'm Linda Liu Wu, and I'm the producer. Thank you. What? Thank you for all being here. What an achievement, Jennifer. Um, you were working on this for close to 20 years, is that right? Yeah. All right, okay, so I have lots of questions for you. But the first question that I really wanted to know is, when did you first meet Corky or learn about Corky? And when did you realize that, my God, he needs to be the subject of a film? He, it, it, we Asian Americans were the subjects for him, but he actually deserves to be the subject. When did you realize that? Um, well, so my background is in journalism. And um, in 2003, I was like, that was a time when the New York Times, you would still clip out articles and I would file them. And I remember seeing an article about, you know, this. I saw the, the title, Getting Asian Americans into the Picture, and I thought, what an interesting article. I actually thought it was a, video, a, a filmmaker, and I didn't really read it. I saw he was a photographer, and I clipped it away and put it um, and filed it. And then within a year, I was at a, actually an AAJA, um, a, a friend of mine was speaking on a panel, and I was in the audience. And then after was done, I turned around and the first person that was there was Corky. But I didn't know him, I didn't know who he was, and I just said, where's the bathroom? And Corky <laughs> says, um, I'll t he's like, well, he's like, he's like, well, it, this building was, you know, and I just said, I know where, he's like, I know where the men's bathroom is, but I don't know where the women's bathroom is. And I said, I guarantee you, if you tell me where the men's bathroom is, I'll find the women's. And he said, well, the building was built in blah, 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 and it was an all boys school. And so it actually could be the, the, the men's is on one side and the, I said, just tell me where the bathroom is. And he's like, I'll show you. And I'm like, who are you? And he's like, I'm Corky Lee. And he's like, I'm a photographer. But I didn't make the connection that he was the guy from the, newspaper article until much later, we, we started talking, he said that he was doing a thing about Asian American mayors um, across the US. And I was like, my dad is kind of an Asian American mayor. And I said, I'm from Colorado. And so he, he actually did go photograph him later. But he, I, I said, why are you doing this? And he's like, I just think it's important, right? So I'm like, why would a person spend his good money doing all these different, and he had a whole bunch of litany of things that he would photograph. So I knew immediately that this guy was really interesting. I never wanted to do a documentary. I'll tell you, it took me about nine years to, conf that's why it possibly it took this long, because I didn't want to make the commitment. I just thought he was interesting, and I wanted to do a five minute piece. Mm, mm, okay. <laughs> I wanted to put it on YouTube, and I, I just find people very fascinating, and I thought I would have all these different characters, but really, obviously, he sucked up all my time, so <laughs> oh, never right. got past it. <laughs> um, okay, so when you work on a project for a long time about a subject who was as 
mm, rich, interesting, talkative, um, committed as Corky was um, to the Asian American community. When you work on a project for that long, I think that your views can change about the impact and the importance of the project, but you yourself change, right? Because who you were when you first started out as that younger person interested in doing, oh, he's really interesting, let me put this on like for five minutes on YouTube, to today, what ha can you just talk to us about the trajectory of the, your connection to the project and your understanding of its importance? Um, I think one of the things that probably anyone who knows Corky knows is he's a very singular vi vision kind of a guy. I think that in itself is is very fascinating that he he just really that was his soul that was his passion was to it was committed to the you know documenting the community so right there you know that that's special and I just think that um, I learned so much about the community through him, right? It was just, it kind of started out very casually. And I think so many people, I mean, I wasn't the only person that found him fascinating and then, you know, learned from him. I mean, that was what's so lovely is that he was so open to everyone. So if, you know, if he's, if it, like he would have many students throughout the years and by those time, like the students became adults and, you know, like he would just, like people would say, oh, I heard about Corky Lee. And then they'd say, oh, I'm gonna go follow you. And he'd say, yeah, I, you know, I'm going to this project. I'm doing this, this is happening in Chinatown. This is happening. And so I think I was one of many, 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 many people. Um, but the thing that I think was so fascinating about Corky is he never changed. I think if you see some of the earlier footage, I mean, his, his, he was steadfast. He always said the same thing. He never wavered in his commitment and in his viewpoints. And I think that that in itself also was really fascinating. I mean, you could interview him and he would, he, he had like things that he would say, but they were like not on the menu, for instance, was he was very committed to that title. But he never, he knew who he was very early on and he knew what he wanted to do. So. Um, yeah, I don't think there's many people. He never changed. I changed because I learned. And so, you know, you, I wanted to document things that were important to him. And that's, you know, the things that ended up in the film. So, um, yeah, he was a huge history buff. So yeah. it was, that was part of the, I think, the process for Linda. It's like very hard to cut down what was in the film because of that. Right. Um, can, and, and I do want to ask Linda and folks who are here on the panel um, about your connection with the film, not just even what you did on the film, but I mean the, the, the connection with working, uh, you know, on a documentary subject as interesting and as committed um, to the community as Corky. So if you could just talk a little bit about that. Well, as you were just talking, Jen, I realized that the need for the film grew uh, more and more over time. Um, I certainly learned so much from Corky um, and from the communities that he documented and um, sadly just saw the need for this knowledge being more and more important today uh, in mainstream communities as well. So we hope that it gets out there. Thank you. I, I just want to go down the line. Um, so, so your connection with the film and uh, Corky's relevance and great relevance. Um, I came to film kind of in regret. Corky had asked me to um, help him and Jen with the film in in 2017, and I never said yes. I didn't say no. And then, you know, the trauma of the pandemic happened, and it's important to me to help Jen finish the project and, and really tell the story of the person who's telling our story. Because if we don't do this now, and we don't put it out there, and we don't coin it in this moment, we're gonna lose it. And um, you know, the community will have Corky's photos forever, and, and, you know, but he really is our hero. That was only one Corky Lee. He's not replaceable. It's such a big loss for us, and um, it's my, you know, I'm really grateful to be part of this. Thank you. George? Um, I originally met Corky when I was a young man, back in the 80s, and he just had such a profound effect on me. Um, I never met anybody like him before. He was a true Pan-Asian, which I try to aspire to. Uh, he um, just opened me up, pulled me out of my Japanese-American bubble, 
And, you know, I found much more empowerment as an Asian American, so that's how I identify myself now. Uh, I miss him tremendously. And, um, uh, you know, I just, I'm just so honored to be part of this team and to uh, keep his legacy alive and to, to you know, we want to make this to go mainstream, right? We want everybody to know his name, and that's the the goal. And 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 to make us, as a community, visible, you know, even more than you know, we can be. You know, I mean, it's like it, it's it's just it's so large this 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 film and and his life, and he lives with all of us. Thank you, George. Linda, can you talk to us? You knew Corky for a very long yes, time. I'm talking about, uh, I met Corky in 1968. Uh, he was a student at uh, Queens College. I was a editor of a bilingual newspaper in New York Chinatown. He came to me to write, to cover a story that a project that he was having along with the fifth precinct, uh, helping youth of Chinatown get into sports. So him and along of uh, several colleges that had Chinese clubs uh, put together a soapbox derby uh, race down Mott Street. I covered that story, and from that day on, our path had crossed back and forth, and plus in conjunction to a lot of projects for 54 years. So I knew him for all the good things and all the bad times that he had, but I do also miss him. Thank you. I think we all really miss Corky. Um, so uh, there are a couple more questions that I wanted to ask um, Jennifer um, and, uh, and for anybody in the panel. Um, were, I know that there were huge challenges in working on this project. There always are whenever you're working on a project for this length of time. So if you can talk to us a little bit about some of the challenges that you faced, um, you know, just one or two of <laughs> the top ones. Um, I, I think that the challenge with Corky is that he's so beloved and he means so much to so many that to tell his story um, isn't going to resonate with everyone because everyone has their own version. But um, I do think that that was a commitment challenge for me. Like, that's why it took so long because I would never think that I could be the person that would tell Corky's story. But at the same time, once I started filming him, I couldn't stop because I never felt the end of the story was there. So it kind of snowballed. And then about nine years in, I said, okay, I'm going to commit it. <laughs> I, gotta, I do have a commitment issue anyway, so I'm going to just commit in <laughs> nine years. And I, I did an yes. Indiegogo campaign. And then from <clears throat> the last 10 years, anyone who's known me, I've always said, oh, it's going to get done this year, or it's going to get done you know, a couple months. Like Linda and I like, really thought it was almost over. But um, after so, we had to do so many, to tell the story, Properly, we wanted to make sure we had communi community input. So with that, we did a lot of community screenings and that helped improve um, a lot of the films. So I think just the feedback took a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was a challenge is like just making sure, no one, every, because Corky was so private, what was really interesting is that no one really knew Corky at all. Like people would say they'd known him for over 40 years, but didn't really know him, right? They, he, they just saw him at a community. Um, event and that was Corky, right? But I knew when I met him, I felt like he was underappreciated. Like I felt like he needed to have a, a national platform where people would be aware of who he is. And unfortunately, you know, he's not around. But that was kind of my initial idea was to provide him a platform so that he could get his message out to a wider audience. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Um, the. Uh, one of the other questions that I wanted to ask was, um, was there, this is just about the filmmaking process, was there anything in there that you had to cut out um, because of the length or whatever that you actually really wished had made it in? This is the outtakes question. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I would take, leave it to them because um, there was um, too much footage. I think Linda and I, you yeah, would have yeah, yeah. I think for me, what stands out maybe is the FBI. The, we had a whole segment built in about how Corky was followed by the FBI and the yeah. CIA. And I went and I got like 
the the information and we had done like a short segment about that in the in one, you know one of the versions of the film so i think that was a really interesting aspect and the other part was just his family life i mean one of our versions had we we tested so many versions of his family life and i think for the community because they didn't know really the background of corky that was really interesting so the balance of family and person the politics and the photography and the personal life was a really hard balance and that's kind of what we were trying to figure out and achieve. So those are the things that stand out for me. I think too, you're looking at 50 years of community activism. So it was really hard. You wanted to tell all these full stories, but um, we didn't have time to go in great depth. So we hope that the film will stimulate interest and you'll want to know more and go out there and Google what you want to know. And w eventually we'll have a curriculum guide so it can get out there in an educational capacity as well. Great. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what is up next for the documentary? Like, where are you going with it? Do you know? Uh, um, no. We don't know really yet, but we're very, you know, we've had interest, so we're just trying to um, figure out what our next steps are. Um, fortunately, I have a, a very experienced team <laughs> who I depend on for that. So, um, yeah, we're very excited. We do know that um, our plan is to get it out large and wide, and we, you know, we hope with this exposure that that can be achieved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that um, for anybody who's here in the audience, um, folks who knew Corky, um, folks who didn't necessarily know Corky directly, um, there is a whole crew of younger artists, photographers, um, who are uh, just inspired by Corky and the things that he was able to do um, in his lifetime. Uh, I think that you, the work that you've done on this film, one of the things is that it's helping to perpetuate Corky's legacy. Um, and so I really want to thank you from the bottom of my heart as a descendant of a railroad worker, all the stuff that Corky did um, and all of the work that you did in creating, you know, like helping to perpetuate and continue this legacy. So I really want to thank you. Um, if we can have a huge round of applause for the filmmakers, Jennifer Sakaki, Linda Liu Wu, George, Lily, Linda, thank you. Great job. Um, one last thing I want to say. Where is Amy Chin? She's back up there. OK. Um, there is a movement afoot uh, to co-name Moscow Street. Oh, sorry. No, yes. Yeah. No. Pal, sorry, sorry. Moscow. It's Moscow. No, Moscow. It's Moscow. No, it's not no, no. Doyer Street. No, no, it's Moscow Street. It's Moscow Street. Yeah. Um, to rename, to co-name Moscow Street, Corky Lee Way. I believe there's information. Amy Chin, can you call it out? Can we go on your site? Uh, yes. Please go and find Amy in the back um, and help support this because it's another way of keeping Corky alive in the neighborhood. Thank you, everybody. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. Can I just say one thing? I would just like to thank everyone up here for sure from the bottom of my heart as well. But if there's anyone in the audience, like Doug, I mean, I know Brittany, like Maddie, like anyone in the audience who's part of this team, can you please stand up? Or the interviewees. There's so many people here that are involved with the film, the crew, the... The interviewees, uh, I mean, you know who you are. Please stand and get recognized. We really appreciate everything you guys have done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.